thy word, thy praise shall sound from shore to shore, till the sun shall rise, set no lesson is written in the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregations of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their fathers' houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, that he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roast it on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, 
its head with its legs and its inner parts, and you shall none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together the psalm appointed for this evening, responsibly. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. The son of your basin, you have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of our souls, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The second lesson is written in the 11th chapter of the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. Mm. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and sing together the first two verses of Hymn 363.
Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I cannot begin to tell you uh, how wonderful an experience this is for me this afternoon, having uh, been driven, not having to drive myself, having been driven up through such a beautiful countryside, everything so fresh and lush and green, the clouds stared away, the sun shining, and then to come here to All Saints, which has so many, many memories for me. I made a point when I was your diocesan bishop to come here at, at least once a year, often it was twice, I think one year it was even more than that, but that, that just made the, 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 the memories all the more pleasant. And to watch a congregation, never really large in numbers, having to uh, struggle and persevere and push on forward, no matter how difficult things became. The last time I was here was three years ago during Holy Week. And it was uh, and fi- finished on the Easter morning with the baptism and the Holy Eucharist. And I recall with memories of pain and sadness that wonderful week I spent with your then rector, Father Andrew. It was a time when we got to know each other even better. I know I had ordained a few years before that, uh, but being together for our meals and uh, moving around and I gave a, a time for both of us to open our hearts and I knew just how much you meant to him here. And therefore when the Lord called him home much more quickly than he or I or you imagined was going to happen it had to be a, a bad setback for you because of the size of the congregation it's very difficult to uh, advertise get people to uproot and come to be here with you. That's understandable. Uh, And yet, at the same time, anyone who has been here certainly has fallen in love with it. And so you come to the stage now, I understand, where you have to make decisions and some people moving, some staying, and the potential of how many we can recruit here of having to make decisions which won't be easy. And yet I will be praying for you I'm going to ask 
someone to let me know when that meeting is going to be. Because on the one hand, numbers are not everything by any stretch. And some of the best congregations I know are the smaller congregations who had to, uh, to strive to survive, but because they knew they had to survive in order to proclaim the gospel and set a standard in the area in which they were living, uh, did it all the more effectively. Because they realized, as I'm sure you have here at All Saints, that you're not in this alone. That in fact, this is God's church. You are maintaining it for him. And as decisions are made, the most important thing you have to keep in mind all the time, not just sometimes, all the time, is what does God want us to do? God still may have a very important mission here in Rutland for all saints to undertake. I don't know. You don't know. But you will get to uh, more certain of what that is as you worship together, as you pray together. And I must say, when I was downstairs waiting for the time to come for the service to start, I glanced at the service book where a record is made of every service you have here. And I was very moved by the fact there are very few blanks in that. Little congregations still struggling forward, friends who love you and care for you, coming to help persevere with the services, and to make sure, in particular, that you were not left for any length of time the rest of the Blessed Sacrament. And so, in some ways, I found it very providential that the day that I could come here, because I was nearby, relatively nearby, at Holy Trinity in Marlborough, was when we're keeping the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Body of Christ, mm -hmm. the Blessed Sacrament. And indeed, uh, this itself is not Corpus Christi, that was last Thursday, but it is the Sunday Coasts. And so we, we, we do it within the octave uh, of, of the eight days of, of, of Corpus Christi. And I'm so happy that it hasn't passed by because of all the gifts you have, some you have acquired, some have been bestowed upon you. But the greatest gift all of us will have is being able to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, that same Lord Jesus who was born in Bethlehem, the same Lord Jesus who went among the people and, and talked with them, the same Lord Jesus who hung on the cross, and especially the same Lord Jesus who rose from the dead. And after he rose at Easter, we have, we always call it the the great 40 days of Easter, Easter to Ascension time. Some modern liturgy people now talk about the great 50 days of Easter, but uh, they're not really even following the Acts of the Apostles, which says the Apostles kept together for 40 days, waiting for something to happen. Uh, the main thing that happened was the Blessed Lord, in their sight, while they watched, went up and a cloud came and received him. And don't ever get wondering about how someone could go like a rocket ship through space. Scripture doesn't say that happened. Scripture just said he rose up and the cloud received him. Don't know anything else about it. It's a mystery that we will know the rights of some time. And then followed nine days called the Novena, the Latin word, nine, Novena, where the apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, sat together in the upper room we think it might be the same upper room where Jesus introduced the Blessed Sacrament on the Monday Thursday. And while they were there, on the ninth day, the Feast of Pentecost, the old uh, wording of Scripture says, when the Feast of Pentecost was fully come, that morning, the world changed forever. Because these were no longer twelve frightened men who kept the doors locked because they were afraid of what might happen to them outside. Instead, they burst open the doors and rushed out into the streets, shouting and bawling and proclaiming, so that people thought they were not a drunk. And, 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 and Peter says, don't, don't say that about them. It's too early in the day to get drunk like that. Which makes you wonder sometimes. <laughs> but they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were no longer alone. 
and the dozen or so of you who are here keeping the light burning, as it were, the light of the true faith in Jesus Christ burning, you are not alone. You have the Holy Spirit within you to help you do that, just as the apostles did. And as stupendous as that uh, um, task seemed, what, 12, 11, like another one, like 12, 12 people to go out and Christianize the world? Well, in the meantime, the devil tried to discourage them. Within their own lifetime, they were referred to as they who turned the world upside down. <laughs> they changed it all. You can say, what can the 10 or 12 of us do here at All Saints to change Rutland or to change our country, to change our church? Well, we have an example that it can be done. But we're also told that the apostles met together frequently to pray and to break the bread. And the breaking of bread was what we now call the Eucharist or the Mass or whatever other name, the Lord's Supper, whatever name we want to put on it. Jesus knew that even with the Holy Spirit, we still needed another contact with him. And so as you heard Archdeacon Michael uh, read to us this evening uh, from the passage that, 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 that uh, is made quite clear, Jesus says, this is going to be the very special way that I can keep contact with you. When you're down and out, when you feel the world is against you, when you feel the church is not treating you the right way, any of those things, you just have to be able to turn and receive him into yourself. And when you receive him into yourself, you're a changed person. I was attending a retreat one time in St. John's when I had a, a monk from the community of the resurrection visiting, conducting the retreat. And we had a lot of young clergy there, a lot older too, I think, in these days. But the younger clergy were all there for a discussion or an argument about something. And he said, what's the most important part of the communion service? Some people said, oh, it's when the priest says, this is my body, this is my blood. Somebody else says, no, it's when he takes the blessed sacrament and lifts it high and says, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Maybe the most important part of the service, someone else said, is when you come up and receive communion. And this is a man in his 80s who listened to us all, and then he said, you're all wrong, you know. You think maybe he should have retired a year or two before that. If you think none of those parts were the right part of the Eucharist. No, he said, the most important part of the Eucharist is when this service is over today, and you receive Christ into yourself, and you open the, the doors of the church and you walk out. That's the important moment, is you're taking Christ from the altar to yourself and out into the community, out among other people. And they should see a different person going out of this church than came in, at least for a time before the devil still gets hold of us sometimes. But it is the receiving of Christ into ourselves uh, and, and going forth with it is our main claim. You've often heard tell of the Lambeth Conference. All the Anglican bishops in the world get together every 10 years. Well, they used to. COVID made short work of that a couple of years ago, and it's been a while. It's going to be another one next year, I think. But I attended only one as a bishop, and it was only the bishops who were present. And we had it in the great cathedral, Canterbury Cathedral. I was with Father Michael uh, a couple of years ago, more than that now, when we did a little tour of the main places in England. And he said, we've got to go to Canterbury. That is the birthplace of the communion. That is our center of Anglicanism. So we went there, and I think he was very caught up with it, as he will tell you himself. But I kept thinking back of attending the opening service of Lambeth in that cathedral, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and all of the other very senior bishops. At that time, I was a very, very junior bishop. And everything progressed. The music was heavenly. I won't say out of this world. I say it was heavenly. It was just beautiful. And then the time came to read the gospel, the Holy Gospel. Not to read the gospel, though, but to proclaim it. And usually, you'll have your servers with candles and that take it down the center aisle so 
you're down amongst the people, as Father was there today, when you proclaim it to them. This time, the gospel book was led down the aisle by a group of dancers, male and female, from Brazil. They were liturgical dancers. And I said to myself, what nonsense are we getting on with now? What's all this new modern stuff going on with? Uh, not, not, all, not all the clergy are in favor of liturgical dance, I've been told. But at any rate, uh, the point was they got down into the middle of the aisle, read the gospel, proclaimed it to us all, but instead of going back up to the altar with it, they went down to the great uh, west doors, and they were flung open. And this group of dancers, still holding the scriptures high, went out into the community of Canterbury, bringing the gospel from the church out into the world. And that is what your role is and my role is. We can't keep this to ourselves, whether we're a big or a small congregation. As individuals, we can't keep it to ourselves what Christ has done for us. Now, Jesus introduced the Last Supper, you know, on Monday Thursday. Three years ago, I was here with him on Monday Thursday when we reenacted that. And uh, that's when it was introduced. That's when Jesus broke the bread and passed the cup around. But so many other things happened on Monday Thursday. Uh, Peter denied Jesus. Jesus was arrested in the garden. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. I'm not going to give them any particular order, just to stick under my mind. But there's five or six or seven different major events in the life of Jesus Christ took place on Monday, Thursday. That means that almost all your deliberations and rejoicings, whatever, have been spread over all these events. And it was felt by some of the church leaders many years ago now that it was right to remember the Blessed Sacrament there, because that's the night he did it. He introduced it. But let's have another day, a day when we can really give thanks for the sacrament itself without having to share it with any other of these great events. And that's where Corpus Christi, and all it means is the body of Christ, nothing mysterious about it. Hundreds and hundreds of our English words come from Latin backgrounds, and uh, this just being, being one of them. And on that day, today on this Sunday, we're commemorating. We're giving thanks that Jesus feeds us with the Blessed Sacrament. That's, that's important. But we're also uh, adoring the Blessed Sacrament, saying this is such a wonderful, wonderful sacrament that enables us to be with God and be with God, be with God in the way that Jesus planned for us to do it. He's the one who introduced it. It wasn't the church. The church inherited it from him. And so over all these centuries, one thing that has bound most Christians together is their love and respect for the Blessed Sacrament. And we don't know, later here this evening, not much later, I'm not going out much longer, but later this evening, I'll be at the altar, and I'll be taking the bread, breaking it, taking the chalice with the wine in it, and over it. And at that moment, that is no longer ordinary bread and wine. It tastes the same, look the same, put it under a microscope and scientists, and it has all the same qualities. Nothing changed to it at all. And yet we teach it is not the same. Jesus has come into it in a way we don't know how. We won't know how probably until the time comes that he calls us home and all these mysteries are revealed. But he is in it now. And so we, when we adore the sacrament, all we're doing is adoring Jesus. Nothing supernatural about it. And here today, uh, at the end of the service, when I give you the blessing, I'm going to do it holding the container with the blessed sacrament in it. I'm going to hold it up, and you will be blessed as you are every time the blessing is said, but especially blessed, blessed by Jesus uh, coming to us in this way, in the Blessed Sacrament. Let me finish with one other little illustration of how wonderful this sacrament is. The city of Lincoln in England, associated with, with Robin Hood, <laughs> the Sheriff of Lincoln, Sheriff Nottingham and Lincoln 
castle nearby. Beautiful cathedral there. And about 130 years ago, the bishop was a man by the name of Edward King. Very, very uh, a devout bishop. I, as a bishop, would like to pattern my life off his. He was such, such a wonderful example of what a bishop should be to God, but also to the people God has put into his care. And he uh, used to like to keep the Blessed Sacrament on the altar, uh, but because the cathedral was never locked, in the evening he would take the Blessed Sacrament and bring it back to his house, lock the doors, and they were kept safe there. Next morning he would bring it back to the cathedral again. And that went on for several years while he was bishop there, a number of years. When he retired, he became a prison chaplain in London. And when he was going to the prison one day, a prisoner rattled down the bars and said, this is a man on death row waiting to be hanged. Come over, come over. And so the bishop went over and said, my friend, you know, what's troubling you? What can I do for you? He says, well, answer a question for me. Well, what's that? He says, is you the man that used to be in, 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 in Lincoln Cathedral? Yes, he said, I was for a number of years. Well, he said, I was down there, I was a, a robber, and a brigand, whatever else you want to call me. And I used to see you come out of the church every night with something held up to your chest. Now, back up a bit. When we carry the Blessed Sacrament, we always carry it in a container over our heart. So I saw you come out with this thing around your neck all the time. And I said, that must be where all the money he took in today in the cathedral is bringing it back home in that little container. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to sit under the bridge here. And when I see him coming by, I'm going to take a rock and I'm going to brain him with it. And I'm going to take the money and go off with it. Oh, well, the bishop said, I just, you, you should know that if you had done that, all you would have got was a little container with a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine. That's all you would have got. So it would have been a waste of your time. He said, but before I pray for you, tell me, why didn't you do it? You said you're there night after night, and I always walked on alone. He said, no, sir. Whenever you walked across that bridge, whenever I got my rock ready to come up and bang you in the head with it, there was always another person walking with you. You were never alone. And if you remember that, with the Blessed Sacrament, that's all he had was the Blessed Sacrament. Blessed Sacrament was Jesus there with him. When all else fails, you've got the Blessed Sacrament. And they may that strengthen and sustain your souls. Remember, uh, in the Old Testament, the, the, the uh, fiery serpents came among the people and were biting them. And the people would die. And Moses said to the Lord, you know, what, what can I do? The people are all being, they, no, they're being killed because they were so sinful, mind you. That's another aspect of this story. And he said to Moses, God said to Moses, make a brass serpent, put it upon a pole, stick it up into the air, and when people look upon that serpent on the pole, they'll be cured of being bitten by it, and they won't die. And Jesus tells that story himself, because it was another pole on the hill in Calvary. Calvary's hill, mountainside. And there was a pole on that pole with cross bars on it. Not a fiery serpent, but the spotless son of, son of God was hanging there for your sins and for mine. And all he's saying is, look on me. Look on me. Take me into yourselves and go out and spread me to other people. Then you too shall live. To God be the glory. We praise his name and we give thanks today for Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, the very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory, judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we remember before thy heavenly throne this day, Carl Wendler, Linda Nardone, Dine Bertrand, Heather Storm, Donna Billy, Matt McGinnis, the McKinnon family, Sue Gilman, Jeff Barnum, the people of the Ukraine. Heavenly Father, we pray for every man and woman in this church family. Thy blessing may be upon them. I offer thanks to thee, O God, for their faithfulness and their dedication to the faith of thy son's church and his holy gospel. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle Paul has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most merciful to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayers. We beseech thee also, so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and help us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. 
Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, remembering especially Andrew Priest, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, remember all whom we love and hold dear in our hearts, but for a time see no longer. May they be in paradise with thy angels and saints, and may thy mercy be upon them. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession unto Almighty God, devoutly new. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here we come to the words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Hear what St. John saith. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Let us join together in singing in number 301. Thank you.
we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy son commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us for the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, thou say to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And although we are unworthy to our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold him. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are they who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for the love that thou safe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the best company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee in the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.